Uh, hello, my name is L.A. Gu. I'm the editor of Personal Finance as well as the Energy Strategist, and I'm also co-editor of MLP Profits. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the factor that's obviously on all investors' uh, minds all over the world, uh, which is basically what's going on with global stock markets and, more importantly, what's going on with Europe uh, in terms of the ongoing credit crisis there. Um, basically, here's what's going on. Uh, a few, a few, uh, several weeks ago, we started to see a lot of volatility in the uh, Greek credit markets. Uh, now, Greece has a very high debt-to-GDP uh, ratio. It's also been running chronically large deficits. Uh, and so uh, it's very weak credit, uh, but it is within the Eurozone, uh, meaning that they do use the Euro in Greece. Um, and basically what the fear was is that Greece itself is a very small country, very small economy, uh, not particularly important in the context of a larger Europe, and certainly not particularly important in, in terms of the overall world. Um, at the current time, uh, Greece makes up about 0.6% of global GDP, so a very small uh, country. Uh, however, the real fear was that the credit crisis going on in Greece, which was essentially a fear that they wouldn't be able to roll over uh, their debt, a uh, fear that they would have to restructure their debt, wouldn't be able to tackle their deficits and, and repay their loans, uh, would, would spread to other countries within Europe. Uh, now, the first countries to get hit uh, were basically Spain and Portugal. Uh, both these countries also have pretty high debt to GDP ratios, have also been ri uh, seeing rising deficits in recent years, and have also been ones that uh, have been pretty chronically, fiscally irresponsible in many ways, uh, and particularly over the last couple of years. Uh, so we started to see uh, the credit crunch sort of move to those countries. Uh, and, then, and then the last country to keep an eye on, of course, was Italy. Uh, now, Italy is the only one of those four I just mentioned, Greece, Portugal, Spain, and Italy, uh, which is really what you would consider to be a very large economy within Europe. Uh, it's one of the largest economies within Europe. And that would really be a concern uh, if the credit crunch had started to sort of move uh, more acutely into Italy as a market. Uh, but what we actually saw was that the European Union came out uh, with a gigantic uh, $1 trillion bailout uh, which really covers uh, all of these peripheral countries uh, really for about three years into the future in the sense that uh, if they needed to, they could access the credit they needed from this central $1 trillion bailout facility uh, for about three years into the future. Uh, so it stopped a lot of the sort of contagion we saw. Uh, the, the yield on Greek government bonds plummeted from the two-year note at one point yielding almost 19% to about 6%. Uh, and we saw also uh, some of the contagion that had moved into Portugal and Spain ease. Uh, and we had just seen the very beginnings of a contagion in Italy uh, where the CDS spreads in Italy, basically the cost of insuring Italian government bonds against default, uh, began, to f began to rise uh, right with uh, in early May, it actually fell after this bailout, and has remained relatively subdued since. Uh, now, the larger concern, of course, is that the credit contagion in Europe, in these peripheral European economies, could spread to the larger economies in Europe uh, and into things like the interbank market, U.S. corporate bond market, and create a sort of global credit contagion such as we saw uh, back in 2008 and early 2009. Uh, so far, that doesn't appear to be happening. Uh, the spread to keep an eye on, one that I've uh, written a lot about in all of the products I write, uh, is the TED spread. Now, the TED spread is the difference between LIBOR, which is a London interbank offered rate, uh, and uh, the Treasury bill, uh, so in other words, a U.S. government bond. Uh, now, when the LIBOR rate, uh, which is basically the rate that banks charge to lend to one another, uh, rises a lot relative to regular Treasury rates, that's an indication that banks have a lot of reluctance to lend to one another. Now, that interbank market is crucial. Um, if banks aren't willing to lend to one another, presumably because they're afraid that their counterparty won't be able to repay those loans, then you tend to see this uh, system-wide credit freeze up. Uh, that's what we saw back in 2008, uh, and that's really what people are worried about today. Uh, but just let's put these numbers into perspective. Um, back in 2006, 2007, before anybody ever really thought about the, cre the credit crunch or the problems with subprime loans, you know, the TED spread was sort of around 50 basis points or a little lower than that. That's half a percent. Uh, as we moved into the height of the credit crunch, around the Bear Stearns time, we saw it rise to two, and at the very height of the credit crunch, uh, two, that's 200 basis points. At the very height of the credit crunch, we saw it rise as high as 500 basis points, or 5%. Um, the TED spread right now uh, is around 30 to 35 basis points. Uh, now, that's up from a low earlier this year of sort of 17 to 20 basis points, but it's certainly way, way, way off the levels we saw really even last summer um, after the credit crunch had already begun to ease. 
So that suggests to me there is some leakage, some concern uh, that we're going to see uh, a contagion that goes into the interbank market. Really hasn't happened uh, to any massive degree yet. Uh, the other aspect of the credit crunch that a lot of people have become worried about, and I think might be a bigger issue longer term, is that uh, the main governments in Europe that are, that are proposing this bailout, countries like Germany, are requiring some pretty, uh, some pretty big fiscal austerity packages for these peripheral economies. Uh, for example, Greece has passed a, a series of two austerity plans worth about 10% of GDP. Now, that's a very, very high number. They've also passed a tax reform plan uh, worth as much as 1% of GDP. Problem there, of course, being they've had trouble traditionally collecting taxes. Um, so they are, there are some steps being taken along those lines. Now, those do help to address the fiscal deficits, uh, the fiscal sort of chronic uh, deficits in, in most of those peripheral countries. But they also have the unintended or the uh, side effect of obviously decreasing growth and pushing a lot of these countries back into recession. Um, the Greek economy is supposed to contract almost 4% this year, probably 1.5% next year. Probably not going to see any growth until the second half of 2012. Uh, but once again, uh, the important thing here is not so much Greece, very small country, it's not so much Portugal and Spain, it really is if that austerity passes into the core European economies. Again, look at Germany and France. So far, uh, that doesn't appear to be happening. Uh, these larger core European nations have much cleaner balance sheets, less need to pass austerity type packages, and they also have a lot of economic momentum. Uh, one of the indicators I watch is the Purchasing Managers Index for Manufacturing across the Eurozone. It's above 57 right now. 50 is consistent with, uh, levels above 50 are consistent with expansion. That's a rapid pace of expansion. Uh, so to kind of summarize things, we have seen a credit contagion. Uh, the fear is that that credit contagion that was started in Greece would expand to the other peripheral economies, and most importantly Italy, the largest of them, uh, and then eventually into the core European uh, markets of Germany, France, UK, and across the Atlantic to the US and perhaps into Asia as well. So far, that doesn't appear to be happening. Uh, the other side of it, of course, is a big hit to European growth as a result of austerity plans. Again, so far we're seeing that mainly confined to those sort of core perif or those peripheral nations, not to the core large economies of Europe. Uh, so generally speaking, I see the concerns we're seeing in the credit markets right now as fairly overblown. Uh, as of this point, I see the move that we're seeing in stock markets in reaction to this as more of a correction uh, of the bull market that started in March of 2009 uh, than the beginning of a new bear phase. Uh, but these are all factors that have to be watched very closely. This is something uh, that I'll be monitoring very carefully in a lot of the, the, uh, the e-zines I write uh, up on investingdaily.com. So keep an eye on those credit spreads. I'll be keeping tabs on those on the website as well. Thank you very much.